One of the coolest things ever is an abandoned mall that they turned into a classic car dealership. And you can see all the way that way, it's classic cars the whole way down. But they have an auction coming up here the 11th through the 15th. And what I thought we would do is take a look at some of the vehicles that were for sale starting out here in the food court. The first car I want to look at, of course, is this 1969 Camaro over here. And the reason I might be interested in this car is because LS swap vehicles are becoming more and more popular. And I, I just want to see what it would take to kind of get this car switched over to a more modern engine. You can see it just has the regular Kregers on here. Uh, originally a, a 327 V8, nothing too, too crazy. Just the original plain Jane car. You can see that they added the little fender flares on the side here. Just kind of wanted to go over the quality of the restoration, see exactly you know what you're starting out with, seats, interior. All of the cars here do have prices on them. Not these cars, because these are auction cars, but we'll show you some of the prices of the cars that you see here throughout the video. But it just looks like every other kind of Camaro. Probably not one that I'm gonna be interested in, maybe because of the fender flares on the back. It's just gonna take too much time and paint to kind of correct those. So this is a, a 1969 Roadrunner. Looks like it's in uh, either metallic or an avocado green. It was a 383. It looks like it's been stroked out to a, a 483. And it does say that it has AC and it does uh, say, yeah, it is a four speed down in there. The gauges look pretty good. I'm not seeing really any blemishes in the paint, no dents in the hood. And this one is for sale on uh, Friday, September 15th. Ooh do have a huge scratch right there in the back you know some people that would scare but that just means to me it's more of a daily driver when that happens you know but probably not a car i'm going to be interested in probably because it'll bring too much money because it's a mopar and it's just well done well restored but let's see what else they got they have a bronco here now i'm I'm not really familiar with Broncos. I used to see Broncos on the internet all the time and you could buy a restored Bronco just like this, not lifted for about 12,000 bucks. And recently over the last five years, they've just gone ridiculously crazy in price. Don't know if this one's for auction. We'll find that out. Uh, I'm not seeing any paperwork on it, but the thing with these Broncos is to put the wider tires on it. Um, they put these little uh, fender flares and what a lot of people do is they they cut the back out originally they would have been just flat right here and you wouldn't have been able to stick this bigger rubber underneath here at all but i like to find the broncos that really haven't been messed with to start out no 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 price on this one if they have any other broncos here we'll get a price for you but let me know what you guys think what do you guys think of the mall like I said, we're located in Morgantown, Pennsylvania, and we'll take a look at some more cars. They have different rooms that have different things, and this one has a couple project cars. I don't think they're for sale at the auction. For example, here is a, a 69 Volkswagen Beetle. No interior or anything like that. They're asking $8,900 for. This is a, a Willis Coupe, a 41 Willis. They're asking Eighteen five for this one sold on a on a bill of sale. It says some assembly required. You can see here it's not painted. There is no. It has a rear end in there, but there's no gear ratio or anything like that. The fiberglass needs welded in on the back end. Eighteen five for a forty one wheel scoop. Not something that you see every day. This is the the one that I wanted to take a look at. This is a Bronco. I'm not sure what year it is. We looked at that restored one over there. This is a, a 1968. They're asking twenty four nine. For. It does have Willwood four-wheel disc brakes, new axles, suspension lift kit. It says that the frame was uh, painted and sandblasted and all the all the rust um, was remedied or taken away. We can see the front grille looks brand new. Yeah, and actually, can you shoot up down underneath there? That car looks pretty good. I see the floors. The floors in it look like they're done. Yeah, it doesn't put a coyote swap in this one and you'd be you'd be good to go. This one doesn't have the flares on it, but you can see that this back panel here is aftermarket that comes like this. 
Yeah, what do you guys think in the comments? 24-9 for this Bronco. I kind of like this piece. 69 Cougar. We'll find out. They got the Marty Report sitting here and everything. Oops, I'm wrong. It's a 1970. And it does say that it has a 351 four barrel in there. Pretty cool car. What color was it originally? Let's find out. It was uh, black. Black with black interior, high back seat. Really cool car. Tinted glass, A-track. Power steering, power front brakes. They're asking uh, 4500 for this car. It says convertible. Oh, it's a convertible. I didn't even realize that. Yep, convertible here. You know, for being here in Pennsylvania in a convertible, usually this area, the whole way back in here, I mean, it looks like it's been patched over there, but usually this is completely all covered and rusted and just gone away. Hay gets down in there, pine leaves get down in there, and completely just eats it all out. So this uh, Cougar doesn't look that bad, in my opinion. We'll go in this room. They have a, a bunch of muscle cars in here. Porsche, got a Olds, got a Viper over there. This is a, a 68 Yanko, of course. Not a, not a real Yanko, it's a tribute Yanko. And they're asking $82,500 for this car. You can see it's got the right center caps on it down here. Different hood for the Yankos in 68. Really, really, really nice car. I like the vinyl top on this car. Yanko is actually the guy who would put spoilers on Camaros before Chevrolet ever did. You can see that it's got the right Yanko tune sticker there. Over there, looks like they have a 74 Super Duty Trans Am. Of course, it's in cameo white. It's got the blue bird on the front of it. We'll go take a look at that. I think it's beautiful. And this is probably uh, one of the last muscle cars ever made. And in my opinion, of course, I believe they only made 900 in some of these cars, but this was like the last production performance car that, that you could buy in, in the mid 70s. I haven't seen one of these cars in a while. Let me take a look at the interior in there. We'll see what it says on the on the card. Yeah, so 1974 Pontiac Firebird Super Duty 455 Trans Am, $86,300, one of 943. Of course, it's a, an automatic car. Really, really, really cool stuff here at the Classic Car Auto Mall. 87 Grand National. They're asking $55,000 for this car. Really presents well. Of course, 87 is the last year for the Grand National. They were all black. I think they made somewhere in the realm of 20,000 of them the last year. They sold a lot and actual production for the 87 cars extended the whole way until December of 87. And I was told that some of them were 87 and a half. So if someone wants to let me know if that's true in the, the comment section below. We have a, a 68 Corvette over here. The way that I know it's a 68 is of course it has the reverse lights below the bumper in 1969 they would have been in the, the tail light here. And it also does not say Stingray on a 68 anywhere at all on this car. And of course, 68 has the, the push button for the thumb. A 69 just has the, uh, the finger inserts right here, but that's 68 only for the thumb. Here we have, uh, looks like a ZR1. I just noticed this one. You can see it says 1995 ZR1. And what's cool about this car is this car is actually wider in the back than in any other Corvette made that year. And we'll see what the tire size says on it. One second. Yeah, and you can see it says 315. Now those were the widest tires that you could possibly put on a Corvette. And I'm not sure how many they made in this year. We'll see if it says that on the side over here, but definitely the top dog for the year, for sure. $58,000 for one of 41 in white. ZR1s are something that are definitely coming up in value. You could have bought a ZR1 for 20, $20,000 like five years ago, and they're trying to sell this one for 60. So might be something that you wanna look out for in the future. Of course, this is a 1970 Pontiac GTO. Now this one is is not a judge. It says that it, it's a judge by the, the stripes and the decals on the outside, but it did not start life as a judge. All judges were Ram Air 3 cars, and it says that this does have the Ram Air 3 heads on it, so they kind of did like a tribute or replica or a clone. It does have the, the tack here on the, the hood. Overall, it's done in orbit orange for 1970. Four speed, center console, really cool car. They're asking uh, $59,000 for it. These cars are coming up in value. I don't think that that price is totally out of line for a 
Orange 70 Judge or Judge Clone. Let us know in the, in the comments below. So the car behind me is a 2015 Camaro Z28. Now, a lot of people like Lambos, a lot of people like Ferraris. I personally like this car better. So this car has a, a 427 from the factory down in here. Also, it was been upgraded with Lingenfelter parts, but these were the cars to have in 2014, 2015. General Motors or Chevrolet wanted to make the best driving car that they possibly could, and they achieved it with this Camaro right here. So if we look down at the ceramic rotors, these are, these are actually like some of the first cars to have these type of rotors on here from the factory. And it's just, it was done right. It won driver car of the year in 2014. You can see that they only made 1,801 in 2015. They're asking $74,900 for this car. And of course it has Brembo brakes. It's got the six speed. It's got everything you would want to actually drive a car and have fun with in a modern car. And I think they're undervalued at 74. I mean, that's a little bit higher than what I've seen other cars sell for or what they've traded for recently. But these Camaros, I just think are the coolest cars from the mid 2010s. If you wanted to buy something, Alcantara steering wheel. I mean, the seats are just, it was meant to do one thing, and that was just emulate the 1969 Z28 as a driver's car, something that I think they did very well. Something that I think is pretty cool is this car right behind me here. This is a, a Pierce Arrow, and how I know it's a Pierce Arrow, of course, is the, the headlights are in the fenders, and that's the way that all Pierce Arrows were made, so if you see that, that's a dead giveaway. Also, the emblem on the top here, of course, the top of the bow is broken, but I think that is a, a pretty cool front piece. They are asking $275,000 for this car. It is a 1936, and these were like the luxurious cars back in the day, and we'll take a look on the inside. That looks quite comfortable for 1936. The color it's got the maroon pinstripe down the side here it matches the artillery wheels these are cars that i see at hershey all the time never really see them out in the wild but overall 1936 pierce arrow cool car so what's cool is we have this 1971 oldsmobile w30 and what caught my eye as i was kind of walking along through here is you can see how it has the red inner fender wells in here and that's a telltale sign of a w30 now of course they cost about 80 bucks and you can throw them on your oldsmobile at home well it is painted in bittersweet which is the color and it does have the w25 dual scoop hood on it it does say that it is one of 810 w30s in 1971 and they're asking 172 five for it we'll see if we can get you a, a walk around the whole car now this car is an automatic and they only built 563 automatics in 1971, as well as 247 four speeds. So with this color combination, with the W30 high performance package, it is a really, really rare car, but this is the only one that I know about in this color combination. Now this car was a performance car, but it was also a luxury car as well. You can see it does have the air conditioning. Just everything inside there was a little bit above and beyond the other cars that were this performance oriented of the time. It has the A-Track AM FM radio down inside there, it has everything that you would want and need in 1971. The car behind Behind it here is a 1968 Dart GTS. Now, of course, GTS stands for Grand Touring Sport, but these cars were super, super lightweight and you could get the big motors inside of them. And some of them were actually the fastest muscle cars of their time. I think it's cool because of course it's in white with the white steel wheels and the black stripe down the side. And of course you can see the GTS call out right here on the front. They would have called this the power bulge hood. This would have been a, a GT or a GTS option only. Now this car does have a, a 340 down inside and it does have the four speed, you know, this car is just super light. That's really all you need is the 340 down in here. But what do you guys think of this color combination? The white on the white, you can see that the tailgate's been blacked out back here. I mean, you just, I see darts pretty regularly at car shows, but I just have not seen one that was white on white 
recently. There's this 1969 Z28. Of course, this one's in red. Now it is a, an X33. It has the hideaway headlights on it. We'll go over and take a look and see what it says. They are asking $115,000 for this Z28. It does have the numbers matching DZ motor. I like the red color. You know, it seems like these cars are just going up in value by the day. They have an orange one back there for auction coming up. I wanted to take a look at that car. And this is a... Uh, a 1935 Rolls-Royce limousine. Pretty classy car for $60,000, $63,000. I think that's kind of cheap for that car, the way it was restored. Of course, they have a Austin Healey over there. And then this is a, a 1940 Ford. It is the deluxe version, has all the extra chrome on the outside. But I want to show you the difference because this is also a 1940 Ford, but this is kind of like a, a custom or basically the way that we've seen them done over the last 20 years. And you might not be familiar with this one though. This is a 1948 Crosley. It is a station wagon with the faux wood down the side. And I have had a few Crosleys. Uh, you can fit a bunch of them down in the bottom of the barn, but they also made like refrigerators and things for like your, um, your kitchen back in the 1940s and that's why the cars are so small this is either like a cadillac or a lasalle yeah it says lasalle down in there and then this is a z10 now if it was a convertible of course it would be a z11 and i wanted to see how much they were asking for this car and you can see they have a hundred and forty three thousand dollars nine hundred bucks on there much more rare than the Z11s. A lot of people have the convertible versions. This one says approximately 200. All the research that I've done shows about 300 to 400 cars made, but they only know of about 200 in existence. And of course, this one has the white hound's tooth in it. Very, very well done. Nicely restored car. RS and a SS together. Does have all some cracking in here. Beautiful, beautiful car. Automatic, of course. Now this is a 1971 Hemi Cuda Tribute, meaning that it is not a real Hemi Cuda, and they're offering this car at 161,000. Now, of course, if you're interested in any of these cars, you can give Classic Auto Mall a call. This is not one of the auction cars. This is a car that's here displayed that for sale. It's in Rally Red. Oh, it was an original, just a 318 car. That's what I was kind of looking out for to see what they started out with. So just a plain Jane 71 318 car turned into a, a Hemi clone. Rally Red, I think they did a great job on it. What's even cooler is this Batmobile. This car I do not believe is drivable although I don't know. And this was a car built for Six Flags, the amusement park for Six Flags, but they are offering this car at $750,000. It looks just like the Batmobile in person. I mean, some of them you kind of think look cheap, but this thing sitting in your garage would look pretty, pretty freaking awesome. The car next to it's a 1964 Shelby Cobra 289, just a small block Cobra. Of course, they're asking $985,000 for it. Now we do have some videos that are gonna be coming up on the channel shortly that are gonna be going over real Cobras with real Cobra owners. And we'll go over all the details of those cars. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and give us a subscribe or a like to the channel for a future video. 1970 426, RT car. I'm not sure if it's an original Hemi car or not. Yep, so it is an original, does have the build sheet 426, 425 car. Uh, they're asking $350,000 for it. I think that that's pretty cool. We're all familiar with the Black Ghost. That sold for about a million dollars. Basically the same car in green. Overall, really, really cool car. Not sure about the one behind it. Oh, okay, so it says 446 pack there underneath the hood black with white stripes this is a 71 of course it has the different grill on the inside and they're asking hundred and sixty five thousand dollars for this car I don't know if you guys had to choose which which one of these are you taking are you taking the 71 black 440 car or are you taking the 7426 green car the tough choice for me I think the prices on these things are coming up. At least the price on this one's a lot higher than other ones that I've seen. And of course, this is an Econo line. You can see it says Econo line Custom 100. I don't know the year. I don't know much about these vans. It says 1974. It says 873 original documented miles. So, I mean, this thing 
has not driven at all, probably because you lived in it in one spot back in the day, asking $57,500 for it, probably does have 800 miles with all the documentation back there to kind of prove all of that to you. It's got the, the faux bear rug back there. What do you guys think of these things? This thing, you don't even need to buy a house if you have this car. <laughs> Want to take a look at this car. I don't think that it's for sale at auction, but this is, a, of course, a, a 67, doesn't have the markers on it. Uh, Mustang Fastback GT car. Now, the reason I wanted to take a look at this car is because at auction recently, I've seen these cars sell for close to $100,000. They were restored a little bit nicer than this car. This one has a little bit older restoration on it. Overall, very nice car. It, even just the Fastbacks without being a Shelby are closing in on $100,000. And we can see that this one is a 390S code car. Let's see how it says the S in the VIN. 390, four speed and then they're asking $89,000 for it. Something that I always tend to look for, of course, the Mustang Fastback. One of the cars that I'm really interested to see how much it will sell for at auction is, of course, this Hugger Orange Z28 1969 Camaro. Orange, of course, being one of the most desirable colors. This is a, a, an X77 car, uh, meaning that it doesn't have the extra chrome that goes down the side of it or anything like that says it's going to be sold on September 15th, 2023, so just a, a week or two away. It does have the, the black houndstooth, the rosewood steering wheel, the silver ball, everything that looks correct for a, a Z28 1969 Camaro. But it'd be really interesting to see exactly what the market says that this car is worth. And we'll find out on September 15th.